Are these graphs the same? I came across an article last month about a breakthrough in the problem of graph isomorphism, which is the question of whether two graphs are fundamentally the same. The article is about a new algorithm developed by Laszlo Babai, which drastically improves the best time for solving this problem in general. I'm not going to talk any more about that or really much about the new algorithm except to talk about some of the basic concepts that it deals with and how they can be used to solve the problem of whether two graphs are the same. This inspired me to pick up an old project that I worked on back in 2011 and turn it into kind of a game that you can play right now. There's a link in the description. You can jump right into it if you want to. But what I want to do is take this opportunity to go over the basic concepts. So if you've never seen graphs before or have any idea what isomorphism is, you'll have the basic idea. And then get into a few of the techniques that you can use to win and are mentioned in Dr. Babai's paper. So first of all, what is a graph? A graph has two parts. The first part is a set, which is just any group of things. And the second part is a relation represented by edges, which are connections between vertices. For instance, you could use a graph to represent you and your friends on Facebook. You and your friends would be the vertices, and then your friendships would be the edges. When two vertices are connected by an edge, we say that they're adjacent. Okay, so what is isomorphism? Isomorphism literally means the same shape, which in the context of graphs means a bijection that preserves adjacency. A bijection is a mapping from one to the other and from the other back to the one. If graphs are isomorphic, then we can create a mapping from one to the other. Each vertex in one graph can be mapped to a particular vertex in the other graph. And when we do that, it doesn't mess up the adjacency. We end up with the same edges, the same relation between the two graphs. We can look at isomorphism in other things, which I think will make it a little bit clearer. Words can be isomorphic. So for instance, the word poppy and the word daddy are isomorphic because we can make a mapping between the two that preserves the ordering of the characters in the words. P maps to D, O maps to A, Y maps to itself, and then in the opposite direction, Y maps to itself, D maps to P, and A maps to O. It's a bijection because it goes both ways and all the characters are mapped. If we took another word, like say title, and we tried to map it to poppy, we could take T and map it to P, I and map it to O, L and map it to P as well, E and map it to Y, but then we wouldn't be able to create a mapping in the opposite direction. P would have to map to two different letters, which it can't do, and these words are not isomorphic. So let's go ahead and look at the graphs that we saw at the very beginning and see whether they are isomorphic. So there's a couple things to look at first. One, do they have the same number of vertices and the same number of edges? And in this case, yes, there are five different vertices and there are seven edges. So that's good so far. If you had two words of different length, they wouldn't be isomorphic to one another. The same way graphs with different numbers of objects in them can't possibly be isomorphic because there's no way that we could have a two-way mapping between them. The other thing to think about is the degree of the vertices. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges that it has attached to it. So we've got two vertices of degree 2 and two of degree 3 and one of degree 4. On the other side we've got the same thing. We have two of degree 2, two of degree 3, and one of degree 4. So that all matches. So far so good. They could easily be isomorphic. The only other thing that we really need is for those vertices of different types to have the same relationships to one another. We can take a look at the node of degree four. We know that one's unique. Nodes that are attached to it need to be the same in both cases. All the vertices are connected to the vertex of degree four. So that's no help there, really. Vertices of degree two are not attached to one another on the left. They only touch the vertex of degree four and a vertex of degree three. Same is true on the other side. So that's pretty much everything that could go wrong here. So if there is a isomorphism between these two graphs, we should be able to move them to represent that one-to-one -one mapping. So let's say we're going to map our vertex of degree four to other vertex of degree four. They have to be mapped one-to-one -one in any possible bijection. We'll take a look at our vertices of degree two. Uh, we don't know really which one is which. We'll just put them kind of next to each other over here. Then we'll look at vertices of degree three that are attached to each of them and kind of put them next to it. This one's attached there, this one is attached there, and we're able to put these vertices into a position where they look exactly the same. So we can say this vertex is just as good as this one, we'll call this a mapping, and you can probably tell if we had made the opposite decision, 
and we swap things around. Let's say we put these nodes on the opposite sides like this, we swap them all around, still looks completely the same. So there's actually more than one possible one-to-one -one mapping, which means there's more than one way in which these graphs are isomorphic to one another. Okay, that's pretty much all you need to know to play the game, and pretty much all there is to graph isomorphism, other than there are some sort of advanced techniques that you can use to try to work your way through the graph, a little bit like what I was talking about with just supposing that you have a mapping between two vertices that appear to be the same and then seeing where it goes as you move through its relationships. This is related to the technique which is called painting. The graphs that this doesn't work very well on are highly symmetrical graphs and any sort of hypothesis that you might come up with to say oh maybe these two vertices map to one another maybe they don't I'll try it is defeated if the graph is so symmetrical and it has so many repeating patterns that you really are probably wrong and it'll take you a long time before you figure out where it stops working and you have a relationship that couldn't possibly work with the assumptions you've already made and then you kind of have to throw it out and start again kind of like a sudoku puzzle and those those kinds of graphs are called johnson graphs and a lot of what dr babai's paper is about solving is when to go forward with this technique of painting vertices and when you have to use some other technique because what you have is essentially a Johnson graph. So I made a game where you can try this out. It has 25 of these little puzzles. They start out really easy but they get harder towards the end and uh, it is timed but don't worry too much about the time because how many right answers you get is way more important than how long it takes you. It looks kind of like this. Um, Basically just say yes if you think they're isomorphic and no if they're not. You can drag the vertices around kind of like you saw me doing with those other graphs. You don't absolutely have to scramble it. Some of them are so easy you can probably tell just by looking others and things are kind of on top of one another and you can't tell. So at the end you'll get a score. A score of 100 uh, I would consider extremely good. In order to get 100 you have to get them all right and you need to do it within about four minutes. So it's pretty tough. Uh, definitely take your time trying to do it the first time. Okay, go ahead and try it out and let me know how you did in the comments because I don't really have a high score system or anything like that. And when you come back, I have a few more things to talk about. Okay, how'd you do? So the other thing I wanted to talk about was my New Year's resolutions for this channel. One resolution is that I want to focus more on computer science topics, but in a very accessible way. So you're not going to see any coding tutorials or advanced topics here. It's going to be stuff that you can pick up without any prior knowledge, and hopefully it's interesting to people of all different kinds of backgrounds. And my other resolution is that I want to make more things. So what you're going to see on this channel is a little bit more of uh, practical projects, a bit more games that you can play, interactive things, both in the virtual and physical world. So I hope you're looking forward to that sort of thing. So one of the most important things in making anything is getting it out in front of people who will support you and give you positive and negative feedback about what you're doing and move you in more new interesting directions. So thanks for watching.